Addison's disease. A general overview. It is also known as primary adrenal insufficiency. It occurs in all age groups and affects both genders. Adrenal glands do not pr produce sufficient amounts of certain hormones, specifically cortisol and aldosterone, due to the failure or destruction of the adrenal glands. It can be life-threatening. Risk factors. Current or previous infection of tuberculosis. Fungal or viral infections. Acquired immunodeficiency syndromes where the adrenal glands are destroyed by opportunistic infectious agents. Drugs that inhibit synthesis or cause excessive breakdown of glucocorticoids. This can result in immunodeficiency. Having or had cancer in the adrenal glands. Bleeding into the adrenal glands. This may also present as an adrenal crisis without preceding symptoms. Normal physiology. The adrenal glands are located just above your kidneys. As part of your endocrine system, they produce hormones that play a vital role in the organs and tissues within your body. Your adrenal glands are composed of two sections, the interior medulla, which produces types of adrenaline hormones, and the outer layer is called the cortex, and that's the focus with Addison's disease. Three different types of corticosteroids are produced by the three layers of the cortex. The outermost layer is called the zona glomerulosa, and it produces mineral corticoids, primarily aldosterone, which maintains your body's sodium and potassium balance. How aldosterone normally works is the first stimulus is when your blood pressure or blood volume falls, triggering the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone mechanism, creating angiotensin II, which triggers production of aldosterone via the zona glomerulosa of the adrenals, and targets the kidneys to reabsorb sodium and excrete potassium. Once water is reabsorbed by osmosis after sodium into the bloodstream, it will increase blood volume and blood pressure, ending the cycle. Next is the middle layer of the cortex, the zona fasciculata, which produces glucocorticoids, primarily cortisol. Cortisol plays a major role in your body's ability to respond to stress, how your body is able to convert food into energy, for example, breaks down proteins and mobilizes fats for energy consumption, and it is involved in the immune system's inflammatory response. How cortisol usually works in the body is stress is the first stimulus. Your hypothalamus produces CRH and goes to the anterior pituitary gland, which produces ACTH, which triggers the zona fasciculata of the adrenals to secrete cortisol. Cortisol converts food fuels to energy and helps with inflammatory responses and responses to stress. Elevated cortisol levels will also inhibit ACTH and CRH, which would stop the cycle. The innermost layer is the zona reticularis, and it produces androgens. These sex hormones are produced in small amounts in both males and females. They cause sexual development in men and influence muscle mass, libido, and a feeling of well-being in both men and women. So what's gone wrong? The failure of your adrenal glands to produce the hormones is most commonly the result of the body attacking the adrenals. Your immune system views the adrenal cortex as foreign and something to attack and destroy. It is a relatively rare disorder and causes impairment of the aldosterone and cortisol feedback loops. As a result of decreased aldosterone production, sodium, chloride, and water are not reabsorbed back into the blood and potassium is not secreted, resulting in dehydration, weakness, fatigue, hyponatremia, which is decreased amount of sodium, hyperkalemia, which is increased potassium, loss of extracellular fluid, orthostatic hypotension, unusual cravings for salt, and decreased cardiac output as a result of decreased blood volume. A lack of cortisol results in the inability to inhibit ACTH and CRH production. Fats and proteins are also unable to be broken down and used for energy. This causes hypoglycemia, nausea, vomiting, weight loss, fever, poor tolerance to physical stress, weakness, and too much ACTH in the body causes hyperpigmentation of the skin. The lack of cortisol and aldosterone can cause these symptoms. Decreased androgen production can cause a loss of hair in women because in men, the testes also produce these androgens. In serious unmanaged cases, Addison's disease can lead to an Addisonian crisis, which is acute adrenal failure. It happens suddenly, it is a worsening of symptoms, and can be life-threatening, resulting in a loss of consciousness or death. To review the key concepts, we'll start with homeostasis. Because of the destruction of the adrenals, they are unable to produce various hormones. These hormones are essential for regulating various functions and systems within the body. Cell membrane. The lack of reabsorption of sodium, chloride, and water, as well as a lack of excreted potassium, directly affects transport across cell membranes. Proteins. 
Due to the lack of cortisol, fats and proteins are unable to be broken down and synthesized for energy. Addison's disease requires lifetime hormone therapy replacement and higher dosing may be needed during periods of stress. They are likely to have episodes of low sodium and low blood sugar. People with Addison's may have a limited ability to fight infection, trauma, and other stressors. All people with Addison's disease are encouraged to wear a medical alert bracelet.